Today we're going to explore the topic whether memory speeds actually matter for gaming. So I've got this memory stick and I've got this memory stick. So technically they're exactly the same memory stick, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running one at stock at 2133 megahertz and CL15. And the other one, I'm just going to enable XMP. So it'll run at 3600 CL. 18. So I'll be testing only five games. We'll be starting with uh, CSGO, Cyberpunk, F1 2020, Horizon Zero Dawn and Red Dead Redemption 2. So I've got uh, two different resolutions, 1080p and 1440p. 1080p the graphical settings have been set to their lowest and 1440p we've got the graphical settings set to their highest. This is to enforce a CPU bottleneck at 1080p and then to reduce any CPU bottlenecks at 1440p. The test system is is a Core i7 12700K with an RTX 3080 graphics card from ASUS and we'll be testing it on the Z690 Tough Gaming also from ASUS. So first up we'll have a look at CSGO at 1080p. I left the detail at high on this one purely because it is still heavily CPU bottlenecked at this stage. The blue bars are with stock 2133 MHz memory and the orange bars are with XMP enabled. So here you can see that the 1% lows stayed pretty much the same, but we did see a bit of a jump in the average, 22 frames per second. I mean, percentage wise, that's not much, but 20 frames per second is nothing to scoff at. Now moving up to 1440p, you can see that once again, the 1% lows stayed exactly the same, as well as the averages. There was a 5 FPS increase, but that is within margin of error. So next up we've got Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, I've got 1080p low detail, no FSR, no DLSS and no ray tracing. This game actually saw the biggest improvements. We have 1% lows of 98 versus 131 and averages 152 versus 187 frames per second. Then moving to the 1440p results, now everything has normalized. Everything is pretty much the same here. So nothing to talk about yet. Moving right along. If we have a look at F1 2020, we did see quite a bit of a bump in the 1% lows by going from stock 2133 MHz memory to XMP 3600 MHz memory, as well as the average just saw about 50 frames per second increase. Now this game already runs at very high frame rates, so this will probably not be noticeable unless you enable a frame rate counter, but it is a nice gain nonetheless. Moving on to 1440p, you can see that the differences are now very small. That is because we've become more GPU bound at these settings. We're not entirely GPU bound yet. We get fully GPU bound at 4K, but this is just to showcase you the differences between a heavy CPU load and a heavy GPU load. You can see that the differences aren't that big. We saw much bigger differences at 1080p, but nonetheless, we saw a 15 frames per second increase in the average, and that is repeatable. Now moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p. Wherever I could, I just used uh, presets. So this is just the preset slider set all the way to its lowest. And here you can see we got 128 frames per second in the 1% lows when running stock memory. And that got a nice bump up to 143 frames per second with the XMP profile enabled. The averages also saw about a 10% increase. So this is actually quite a nice gain. Now moving on to 1440p once again, here you can see that the scores are pretty much identical. This is because in this game we are fully GPU bound at uh, these settings, so we won't see much benefit from faster memory. Now the last game we're going to have a look at is uh, RDR2 or Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p with the preset slider set to its lowest. And you can see we've got a 1% increase to 103 up from 91 by just enabling XMP and the averages actually jumped quite a bit as well. It increased from 135 frames per second to 154 frames per second. At these settings with this system we are CPU bound so this makes sense. Upping the resolution to 1440p and selecting the highest quality settings with the preset slider, you can see that those gains now normalized. There is a two frames per second increase in the 1% lows, but that's margin of error, and one frames per second increase in the averages, which is also margin of error. Right, so what does this mean for gaming? Well, memory speeds actually do matter for gaming depending on your graphical settings and whether you are cpu bound or gpu bound if you play esports titles you are most likely cpu bound like csgo and memory speeds might help you a bit 
even though CSGO didn't see much scaling, games like Warzone, Fortnite, Apex Legends, etc., they make better use of faster memory. Now, when we play single player games at realistic settings, meaning higher resolutions and higher detail settings, you can see that memory speeds make very, very little difference. The only reason why we saw a little bit of an increase with F1 2020 at 1440p is purely because we weren't GPU bound at that stage. So there's a lot of talk about memory speeds and whether it helps or not for gaming. And as you can see, it definitely does, but it depends on your scenario and your needs. If you mainly play single player games and you are already GPU bound, then upgrading your memory just won't yield any results. Now, the CPU does rely quite heavily on memory speeds as we saw in the CPU intensive games or the CPU bottleneck games. And that can actually help you if you are planning on upgrading to a newer GPU and your CPU can't keep up with its current settings. You can try a little bit of overclocking the CPU as well as enabling XMP or manually overclocking your memory. The gains from manually overclocking your memory over XMP might be negligible, but if you do get a decent RAM kit, you can up that 3600 megahertz to 4000 megahertz with lower latencies, and that might gain you a few frames per second. This is especially true when you are CPU bound, but not as much when you are GPU bound. All right, and uh, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we hope to see you in the next one.